Hello, my name is Helen Bobbington, and I interviewed Mary Hollow, who is the director of the Prickly Pear Land Trust. Now, this picture is a picture of the trail system uh, right around my house in Helena, and I think <clears throat> it really just shows how immense the task is of connecting land to create a continuous trail system. Um, but that really is the purpose of the Prickly Pear Land Trust, to connect land and the people um, so that we can try and conserve land for uh, future generations. Okay. Um, so I've been with Prickly Pear Land Trust now for almost six years as the executive director. And prior to that, I was the external affairs director for the Nature Conservancy in Montana, mm -hmm. operating statewide. Prior to that, I um, operated fishing lodges in the Blackfoot Valley and on the Missouri River for Paul Roos Pro Outfitting here in Helena. Um, and, and then prior to that, I worked for Senator Baucus in Washington, D.C. and in Missoula. So I did a little bit of um, the policy D.C. angle and then how that applies here in the state as well. And um, was more on like the writing end of the policy in D.C. and then on the implementation end of it in Montana. Uh, those, I kind of, I guess I'm going through my resume backwards, but I, um, <laughs> I graduated from the University of Montana and my degree was in uh, finance, business finance and economics. And is that I know, um, so I'm obviously in a class about climate change and your work is a lot more about conservation. Um, but I was kind of wondering how you view the intersection of conservation and climate change. Uh, especially when trying to conserve um, areas that are being pretty obviously affected by climate change? Mm -hmm. um, we are the organizations that do the community organizing and outreach around conservation issues and engage the public in that in our regions. And in Montana, there's like four regional land trusts, Gallatin Valley, Five Valleys, Prickly Pear, Flathead Valley, and Bitterroot. Um, and we all have memberships that have, you know, several thousand people that are sympathetic and inclined to act on climate change. It's important that we engage those, our members, in arming them with the knowledge of what they can do and why it matters. So I think that's probably the Yeah, um, so we used to refer to it as grassroots and grass tops. Mm. And I think the best way to answer that is that everyone has a role in this, whether it is at the local level or at the grass tops level. Understanding your role and how to fully execute the best outcomes within it is what we all need to do as leaders in our own individual places and selves and networks. The other key piece to that functioning well, obviously, is that there is coordination throughout. And that's what we haven't seen in the last four years. It's been that disconnect of, of coordination and um, collective forward motion on a, on a specific topic, whether it's climate change or whatever else. Um, so I have really, I'll give you a couple of different examples. Um, part of my job with the Nature Conservancy was to activate citizen lobbyists to advance our conservation funding um, objectives at the national level. I would work with five or six really influential individuals, depending on whoever it was that I was trying to lobby. So I would figure out who their friends are and who their, 
who their influencers are. And I would work with those individuals, get them up to speed on why what I was lobbying for mattered so much and why we needed their help and how they could help. And that was my role at the Nature Conservancy. And so one or two really key or really effective grass tops lobbyists, citizen lobbyists, I mean, there are five grass tops lobbyists who I think totally moved the needle on the Land and Water Conservation Fund permanency. That's a funding source that used to be about 250 million a year sprinkled out throughout the US. And now with its permanent reauthorization that happened in September, there's $900 million every year forever in that fund, which is all, and it's all for conservation efforts. So this administration will prioritize climate change resiliency in how that money gets expended. And so having that coordination from the top down to the bottom is not only gonna be rewarded by those at the bottom who have the projects that align with what the national and federal level is telling people that the priority is, i.e. climate change resiliency, but also, you know, think about like how much we can all get done when that works well, right? So at the local level, you're gonna, it's gonna take your generation being in those leadership roles to know how basic and intuitive and necessary these things are, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, there is, uh, 